Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. This is Julie Bruns, and you are about to be inspired. I am so excited to share my conversations with amazing people from all walks of life who figured out how to be happy, peaceful, and content doing work they love and making the world a better place so that you can see what's possible for your life. I can't wait to hear what you think. Send me an email and let me know one thing you're taking away from this episode. And never forget, anything really is possible. Welcome, everyone. My guest this week is David Marsh. David and I have never spoken before, but I know your work, David, because um, there's a very cool movie that you just produced and released called Adapting to Die. And you and I are connected now with that because Jim Elliott, who was on my podcast, uh, I think last year, I remember when, um, he and I were connected and I reached out to him and got him on my podcast because he does really cool work with Dive Heart. And that's how I learned about your work. And I'm really excited to have you here. And I'm so glad that you agreed to be on my podcast. So welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, The movie premiere was a dream come true. It was like a family reunion for all of us that Mm -hmm. uh, had been together in Cozumel. And so such a a great experience for everyone. It was moving. My husband did a little work for Jim too last year, some um, photography or something for one of his, I forget what it was for, but um, I got, I got him involved and it's just very inspiring. The work you're doing, the work he's doing, seeing these stories, putting your life into perspective and, you know, just seeing what else is out there. We, I think we just get so ingrained in our daily lives and our struggles and our triumphs and just the, you know, the immediate group around us. And then we forget there's this whole big world of all kinds of things going on. And um, it just, it's just amazing stories, inspiring stories. And the, the documentary was really well done. And um, I can't wait. I promoted it on LinkedIn already. And I can't wait for more people to see it on Amazon Prime. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's uh, it merits people looking at it. It leaves you with an inspiration. It leaves you with the feeling of like, wow, I can do this. If they can do that, then I can do it. It's, uh, it's really fun. That's exactly what I took away from it when we were there. My husband and I just kept looking at each other like, just it's crazy when people get in the water and, and how they feel about themselves and all, all everything that led to their life and and the troubles in it and then they j- jump in the water and they're just so inspired and so just proud of themselves and it just it really really does float your heartstrings and makes you believe anything's possible which is what Jim's all about too right now. Absolutely, uh, it's it's all about creating possibilities in your life, and uh, that's absolutely one of the biggest themes in the film is, is possibilities are, are limitless. Yeah. And I know that's what you're all about. So I yeah, that's that why that was one of the reasons when I initially reached out to Jim. I'm like, listen, I'm writing this book, and I think I don't, can't remember if my book was done when I had him on, but I'm like, that's why it's in the title of my book because it's what I believe and the title of my life. And I love meeting people like you that show other people what's possible because. If you don't have the examples, you don't believe it. And um, that's why I do the podcast. So I want people to see that there are all kinds of people doing cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. the, the whole impetus for this journey for me started from being in a place of uh, sadness and hopelessness, uh, just in my personal life, going through business failure, going through a relationship that evolved. Uh, and I was reading Soul Blazing. Uh, my friend Lisa Hesha wrote Soul Blazing. It's a fantastic book at the... Um, in the book, she's got a quote that says, you got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to experience the satisfaction of helping others. And by stepping outside of yourself, you are actually able to see yourself with more distance. And I went, man, I, I got to get out of this mindset. I got to get into a space of out of my head and into my heart. And I wanted it to be of service. And I, I think everything in the universe is about vibration. And I, I put out that desire to have something change in my life. And I was on a scuba trip in September of 2021. And I met Jim Elliott and Tina Marie Hernandez. And I'm like, hey, we've been diving for a couple of days. What do you guys do? And they're like, oh, we help people that are wheelchair users and other uh, disabilities have that experience of scuba diving and having that astronaut moment in the water. And I was like, oh my God. And they said, it's this life-changing experience that people get to experience. And I thought, man, I want to have that life-changing experience. You were on a boat? Were you literally on a boat with them? Literally was on a boat. In the film, I go, I was there in September and I met this guy, Jim, and there's me holding my GoPro. And in the back, I have this big red arrow that says, Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I thought that was so. literally like, That's crazy. You're just on this boat meeting these random people. And, and I had put out the thing in the universe saying, hey, I need a change in life. What 
possibilities can be created. And uh, after I met Jim, he says, you know, I believe there's no accidents. I think we should work together. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I don't know what we could do. You know, he says, what do you do? Well, I'm a filmmaker, I guess. You know, And I thought about it for about a month and I called him and I said, hey, we should do something together. And he said, we're taking a trip in December. Why don't you be a part of that? And we'll, we'll make something. And so I did three months really later, know, three months later, literally from September to December. Now I'm on a boat and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing and learning stories. And then, of course, part of the movie is that seven days before I was on this trip, uh, my son passed away. He was 27. He had been uh, an addict. He was in recovery and he just decided to try it one more time. And uh, it, it got out of control. Uh, we, I did CPR on him. I was able to get his body to activate. His brain had already shut down. Uh, he, the story is that he had the ability to be an organ donor for other people. So there was a legacy of love he was able to leave. But, you know, that, that just changes everything when you lose a loved one. And I was like, man, should I go on this trip? Should I not? And my family said, you need to go on this trip. There's nothing we can do, you know, by you not going on it. And so I went on the trip and I, I didn't share my journey with anyone. I just kind of kept it private because I didn't want it to overshadow because I'm still like, what's the story? What's the story? Right. And um, as I depict in the film on day three, I had this feeling that early morning, that liminal space between wake and sleep. And I felt like I was getting a communication. And the communication was, dad, the movie's about you. You are learning to adapt. That's what people need to do in life learn to adapt and I went oh my god and you know the the fu fun part about post-production is you take all these pieces and you weave it together to create a story and I thought oh I can't make this about me you know I'm, I'm behind the camera it's about Chris and Peggy and it's about you know all the people that were in the show and what they're learning and dive part so I put together a piece that was really more of an infomercial and um my friend Lisa, who wrote Soul Blazing, uh, she helped me and she said, you know, Dave, it's a nice infomercial, but it doesn't tell a story. You really need to share your story. Mm -hmm. People should know, well, why did you go and film Dive Heart and what was your experience? I'm like, oh, that's what I got on day three. So Lisa confirmed that that was the journey. And so a little reluctantly, but I interjected my story in the film and then I realized Ah, oh, that's the beauty of it. Now, Dive Hard is the hero of the story. Mm. And it's not like Dive Hard this and Dive Hard, you know, it's not the infomercial. It's the story of how I learned to adapt to my personal journey. And we all do by seeing other people overcome their circumstances. I love it. I love it. You're so right. And I, I only know about the post-production piece you just mentioned because, you know, I do these podcasts and then my husband and I, he produces them and I, you know, I, I go back and listen to listen and do notes and all that other stuff. So you're right. Until you see, we, you know, you weave things together. I take notes when I'm doing my podcast because I want to remember what people said. Obviously I can look, listen to it later, but you don't know till perspective, right? You step back and you listen and look and hear, and you're like, wait a minute, all these things weave together. I love that you took these messages and kept basically asking for signs, getting signs, and then took it all together and said, wait, this is, it's a bigger story. And that you had a friend that said, listen, this is all great what you did, but it really needs to be bigger. And of course, the bigger story is more impactful and you have more perspective and and then you're, you're shining a light on all these other beautiful people. And then your you and your journey and your son, it's it just it was it's a beautiful story. And I'm, I'm so glad you did it. It ended mm. up where it ended up. Yeah, thank you. I, I really believe that when you connect with the heart and you share from the heart, it connects with other people at the heart. It's a very heart connected story. And I did it just to show, you know, what is Chris's journey? How did he become someone that's a wheelchair user? I found out he had a spinal cord injury. He was a mechanical engineer. He was a very uh, robust, active person. And then now he has to change his life. And now he's paralyzed from the armpits down. 80% of his body doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And yet he still gets up. And yes, he goes on this amazing amazing trip and we see him get to go scuba diving but what about the other time the rest of the year and I learned about his personal journey and uh, it's just so inspiring you know Peggy she had a surgery that went wrong and instead of living in this I'm angry she thought well that's now part of my journey there's nothing I can do what can I do to continue to move on and I was like Wow, just hearing wow. story after story. Uh, Tracy has ALS and she's extremely intelligent, but her ability to communicate has been diminished. So she says she feels like people think that she's not all there. So not only does she have physical issues, now she has the feeling like people think that she's not, you know, completely there in her faculties. Yeah. And she's like, I am. And she learned how, you know, when we treat her, 
uh, just as one of us, not as someone with a disability, but someone that has a level of challenge to overcome. Um, and so with that, you know, I'd get on the boat, and I'd have wet shorts and she'd be sitting there and I'd kind of lean over on the side and put my wet shorts on her arm. She's like, Hey, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you sitting there. And just kind of give her a hard time. Uh, she's like, Oh, I love that. She's like, I feel funny. just like one of the divers. And it's just right. such a journey of love. That's awesome. Did you always know I mean, were you always, so this is your work, film producing, obviously, but did you, was this always your path or were you always artistic and, or did, you said you mentioned a business um, um, in the beginning, what, what was your, how did you get to where you're going now to tell stories and. So I, I grew up as a creative and I just wasn't given that opportunity. And uh, I, I tried many things in life. I tried to stick to a narrative that said you got one life and you better get it right or you have you know eternal consequences if you don't get it right and mm -hmm. that was a religious narrative and as i continued to learn and grow i realized the universe is bigger we're all part of it it's not something separate and uh as i began to find my joy and my passion i realized i'm a storyteller i connect with the heart and when i do that i produce something that's uh, made in and with love and so part of my personal journey is to continue to do that. It's, it's not a destination. I haven't arrived. I'm like, oh, I'm very successful. I don't have yeah. to do anything anymore. No, I'm still on the path of, of self-discovery. I'm still on the path of creating content. Um, and it's, it's just a, a joy of mine to be able to work with other people. Uh, I've been self-employed. I do a lot of things by myself. Uh, I've been a lone wolf that comes out with the camera and the lights and the microphone, and I can produce everything. Uh, I've done a lot of marketing and commercial work. And as I continue to venture into uh, more of the documentary space, I'm finding that when you work with a team of people, when you work with others, I got to be a part of the Dive Heart family. And that's where the magic is when you're able to take your abilities and combine it with others. And it all just comes together in this wonderful, wonderful story. I love that. I love what you said about um, it's a journey. We've heard that people write about it. It's, it's all over. It's a journey, not a destination, but it really is a journey. I mean, you, you think you're going to get to this one thing. Like you said, you, this, this, this movie you should be very proud of. Um, and, but it's not over. I'm like, of course, it's a journey. You met all these people. You have all these new stories. You have this new perspective. It's going gonna, it's gonna to open up other opportunities. We're meeting, you know, you, you, Jim knows. I mean, it's just crazy, all of the synchronicities like we talked about and the connections that you're making. But it's like, what's next? There's something else next. Well, this, is, this is one path that, you know, your son was guiding you a little bit. Um, this is one um, piece of your journey. And then there's going to be something else after this, but you had to do this to get to your next thing, whatever it is, but there's never a, you never just sit. I mean, I, I'm all for celebrating and I'm all for um, accomplishments and being rewarded, but then it's like, there's always something else and you learn something there. And then it's going to take you to the next thing. Or you're supposed to share that message. You're supposed to do it again, whatever it is. But I think that's something that we're not taught enough about when we're growing up. It's just like, get the degree. I was anyways, get the degree and then you get a job and then you just get a job and then that's it. You're just happy. It's like, no, no, no. There's, there might be another job. There might be five jobs. There might not be a job at all. Maybe it's having, raising a family. You never know. Um, but I think, I don't think it's talked about enough that it's a journey. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things in my life is learning to trust and not have certainty in life. So many of us want certainty. And so we subjugate our dreams and we get ourselves locked into a position where we get enough money to pay our bills every month. But then we're like, oh, I don't feel like I'm able to express myself. Um, some people do have that ability, whether it's a hobby, to some creative outlet. Um, other people feel like, look, I've got something I need to share like myself. I'm like, there's a story within me. There's things I need to share in my life. Mm -hmm. And how can I do that? So I have to continue to trust, open myself up to, well, whatever is next, I just have to kind of trust, fall into the universe and, and believe it's going to happen. And that's very challenging because we all have these earth bills that keep coming up every month you know, for yeah. insurance and you know, living space and gas in the vehicle, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's an ongoing challenge. I think that's one of the things in our human journey we're here to really do is, is to have trust that it's going to work out. If you're diligent, you're moving forward and you're connecting, you know, with, with your truth and with love. I totally believe that. 
I keep getting this message over the last month. It's let it unfold. I, I see it written. People are saying it to me. I hear other people you know, in conversations that, that let it unfold. Again, something we're not really taught growing up. It's just because because I was taught anyways, you work hard and then you have what you need. Um, you get the degree and then you'll have this and then you get the job and somebody gives you a job and then you, and then you do this. It's like, but letting it unfold. And he's like, you said, trusting and, and being uncertain about things. It's, it's hard to do. I think as we get older, it's scarier because you don't have the certainty, but it's also you understand that more and more because you look back at your life and say, ah, I, I didn't let that unfold and I pushed it and I, I didn't end up where I wanted to be. So maybe I should try to let it unfold. But that Letting it unfold is difficult, but it's important. And I think if we can learn that earlier, our, our journeys are more, they're just, they're more um, purposeful and you, you have more of that human connection because you're, you're just kind of seeing where things take you. And I think we're also trained that definitely in our in our United States society that um, you can just work hard and push, 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 and then you'll get it. It's like, no, the pushing isn't actually where all the answers are. It's the letting it unfold where it is, but we're not, it, it seems counterintuitive. I know, I know for me it was. Yeah. Uh, not only is it about trusting and letting it unfold, but you have to trust the process. You know, what, what is it? Everything is happening. It's, it's all perfect. And, you know, one of the most important things I've learned in my journey is there's no way to mess up this life. You can make choices that in this life look like, oh, that doesn't work out. You're going to be homeless, or you're going to have a relationship divorce, or you're going to have something, you know, a bankruptcy or something. And while that looks bad, if you look at the whole process of the soul evolution, it's just an experience. What did you learn? And I've done so much study and research about uh, near-death experiences and the afterlife. And I hear the people say the number one question is, did you love? Did you love? Did you give love? Did you receive love? Because that's really the ultimate lesson that we have here, the ultimate experience. And when you just realize, okay, the highest form of love is the trust and you let go of, of needing the control. I got to control. I got to wow. control. Oh, you just let that go. That's the joy space. And it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There's nothing easy about jumping off a cliff and hoping the parachute opens or, you know, whatever the metaphor is, uh, you know, even in the scuba diving paradigm, you are trusting, you have got a regulator, you have a tank on your back, you're trusting your gear, you've got a dive buddy, you're trusting that. And in the film, uh, I even have a demonstration, one of the very, very, very experienced divers and it's the dive buddy is Amy. And I do have this piece where she ran out of air. She was so focused on her diver. She runs out of air. Amy is so cute. She was sitting behind me and she goes, Oh my God, you put this in the movie. And I'm like <laughs> laughing. She reaches over and taps me on the shoulder. She goes, why did you do that? I said, watch, watch, watch. And I said, Amy knew better, but she was so focused on her diver. And, but she was able to trust that we had her back because divers help each other. And just in life, we're here to help each other on our human journey. And so I go, see, see, I used it for a positive thing. Wow. So I said, thank you for that. So she, she, she got a kick out of that too. She was yeah. like, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's great. I, I know I could see, I, I remember that moment and how she was like, what do you mean? You, you showed everyone that, but, but like you said, it, because the, that's where we can relate to people anyways, when you're making mistakes or like you said, she was so focused on someone else because she was trying to give to that person that she forgot about herself, which is also loving, right. And trusting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a beautiful story. Um, yeah. so tell me about when people ask you, so they're going to see this movie and then they're, you're probably going to get lots of questions about your success, et cetera. And um, when you do, I'm sure up to this point, you've had people ask you, you know, how do you figure out what you want to do with your life? Have a meaningful career, do something that's purposeful and loving and, and, um, you know, keeps you on a, on a journey that's truly yours. What do you say to people when, or it, when you're it's about you? It's about connecting with your joy space in life. What, it, what lights you up? What are you enthusiastic about? And um, it, it's, you know, when you sit there and close your eyes, you think, this is what I want to do. And it, it's, it's just that, oh, I can't imagine doing anything else. But I don't know how to get there. And that's the trust moment. Uh, for me, I'm a creative. I'm someone that likes, likes to tell stories. I somebody gave me a video camera years and years ago and I learned how to use it. And I had some mentorship along the way and I had some people help me. Um, but it's still a, a process of what, what lights me up. And uh, it, it, you just have to keep moving forward. You have to keep creating things. I've created a lot of things. Some of them work really well. Some of them don't. Uh, regardless, you just have to stay connected to the path of 
telling a story and uh, it always, it always works out. Uh, I don't know that we are ever in a space where we're like, Oh, I found it. I'm done. I've done everything I want to do. You know, maybe if you're in your retirement years and and you've uh, put yourself in a financial space where I, I don't know, maybe that's other people. For me, I just can't ever imagine not having mm-hmm. some creativity, not wanting to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's connecting to my joy, connecting to my truth, lighting up that enthusiasm within me. And for me, storytelling is that space. Awesome. Is there anything looking back? Obviously, it's a journey, and there's always not even. Don't think about it like a regret. Think about it. is there anything you wish you learned earlier, like some lesson where you got and you're like, oh. I had known that five years earlier. I can think of a few, but is there anything that sticks out in your mind? Absolutely. If you don't have any regrets in your life, then you lived a really safe life and you just did everything the way you were supposed to. And you were probably bored out of your head. Right. You know, I had a, a coffee shop and um, m- my wife told me, don't do it here, but it's on a busy street. We're going to get lots of traffic. Don't do it here. They're going to drive by. And sure enough, it was on a busy street. They all drew- drove by. They went downtown and they found a coffee shop after they parked. And, okay. and, you know, do I have a regret in life? Absolutely. What did I learn from that? Well, it changed the course of my pathway. It opened me up. I had a spiritual revolution and evolution from that process. And I'm a different person today because I went through that process. So was it a bad experience? Well, yeah, at the time, but mm-hmm. how is it now? Well, it's just part of the journey. And I look at the, the scars that I have and each of the scars and metaphorically on my on my life, they represent something I went through, something I overcame. And, you know, part of the theme of the movie Adapting to Dive is you can go through it. You don't have to necessarily adapt and overcome. Sometimes you just adapt and go through it. And when you come out the other side, you know, as Kelly Clarkson taught us, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. Yes. Yes. It's so true. It's so true. I love it. Yeah, you're overcoming things and sometimes you're just adapting and you didn't necessarily have to even overcome something. You just changed, you adapted, you figured it out and you adjusted. My dad used to say, um, there was this, do you remember um, successories? Do you remember those? Um, They were always like uh, ships and they were like, um, oh my God, I just thought of them because I'm thinking of my dad. Um, they used to have them in offices and they were just quotes on a, and it was like a sailboat says, uh, you can, you can adjust the wind, but you can always adjust the sails, stuff like that. It was a popular back in probably like 20 years ago. I just thought of it. Yeah. My dad used to say that he loved that. You can't adjust the wind, but you can adjust the sails. You can always, um, make adjustments and adapt. And it's always possible. And it might not look like you want it to look, but that doesn't mean it's not exactly what's supposed to be happening. Yeah. And that's, that's absolutely true. It's everything that we do as a human is about learning to adapt to something and uh, you know, whatever, whenever that wind is blowing, this is another beautiful poster. The Eagle soars higher with the stronger, the wind of adversity, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and if you just take that, you're like, wow, I'm going through really hard things. Yeah. You're going through hard things and that doesn't diminish it. And yeah, other people, you can compare them think, Oh, I'm not, I'm not going through the same as them. Yeah. But whatever you're going through is still really big to you. Just learn to trust the process, adapt. If you can't overcome then go through it and you'll find out that on the other side, there's a reason, there's a purpose you've become stronger. Um, and, and it, it all works together for, for positiveness. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I have a few final questions for you. Um, you can answer them in the order you'd like. What's the greatest gift that you, David Marsh, office the world every day? And what's one new thing you'll be taking away from our conversation today? Um, you know, it's what I offer is connecting a story, connecting my heart, connecting my experience. Uh, may my journey be medicine to somebody that is there to hear it. Uh, some people might hear something I have to offer and they're like, great, it doesn't really connect. That's fine. But other people will hear it and they're like, wow, that really connected. And so may that offering be a gift. Uh, may my pain be my source of power and may I move forward. And um, something that I've learned from today is um, I appreciate folks like yourself that we're here to say, how can we be better? How can we all work together? How can we have some conversations that help raise consciousness? We get so many inundations constantly with negativity and, you know, it's, it's easy to watch the news and think, Oh, what's the point. Mm -hmm. But if this is a world and it's allowed to be a world, things are going to happen in it. And if we don't have something to overcome, I don't know, maybe we'd get bored in life. If everything was rosy and perfect all the time. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, no, I love that. You're, you're, um, thank you. It's, uh, and, and you doing the work that you're doing. That's why I have the podcast so I can meet people. I get to choose who got, who gets to be on my, my podcast, but meeting people that are making the world a better place that are loving what they're doing, that are examples of, um, overcoming, overcoming triumphs, overcoming obstacles and just saying, well, what else can I do better? And what else can I do, you know, for other people? It's, it's, it's what it's all about. I believe that my whole life. And it's fun to meet people that are doing exactly that. And you're a great example of that. So thank you for the work you're doing. And I can't wait to see what you do next. I know this is just the beginning, probably about uh, lots of adapting to lots of different things. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's always a work in progress. Um, I, I have, stories that I'm crafting and beginning to create. I'm in pre-production for a few different projects and um, nothing that I'm ready to release and say, oh, I'm doing this because I'm yeah. still putting the pieces together. But um, it, it's, it's always a process. It's always a journey and it's always unfolding. That's awesome. So if people want to see the movie or any of your other work, what do you want to, where can they go to learn more about what's the easiest way to get access to the movie? It, it's, it's easy to find Adapting to Dive. It's on Amazon and um, it's you type in Adapting to Dive and it pops right up. Awesome. I have another documentary I shot last year called Healing from the Inside Out. So it's, it's kind of a neat feather in the cap to have two documentaries on Amazon. It's a place where people can uh, experience and explore new things. Um, the Healing from the Inside Out is about a, a friend of mine that had COVID, she kind of got COVID brain and she went to a healing center and she had all these epiphanies about her personal life. Not only was she healing her body, she was healing uh, some issues in her, home, her own life. And, and it's just another inspirational uh, thing to help people on their journey. Ooh, I can't wait to check it out. Healing from the inside out. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Lisa, she wrote Soul Blazing. It's a wonderful book. And her and I worked on a, proj a project. It's called uh, Conversations. It's called Soul Blaze Your Life, Conversations with Master Teachers. It's available on 2B TV. And um, we just had wonderful conversations. In fact, Coop Blackson was one of our guests. And I noticed you had a conversation with him recently. He's wonderful, um, you know, for listeners, if they haven't heard that podcast, it's absolutely fantastic. And so when, when you meet people, you connect uh, you share this passion and the zest for life. Good things are bound to happen. I couldn't agree more. I just keep doing more of that and letting it unfold and, and um, along your journey. So thank you so much for being here. And um, I wish you all the best with all your work. And I, I'll i be always a, a fan of yours and, and helping you to promote it. So um, thank you. Awesome. Namaste, my friend. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you, David. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you loved this episode. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, review, and share it. I hope you were truly inspired. And for a little more inspiration, don't forget to pick up my book, Peace, Possibilities, and Perspective, Eight Secrets to Serenity and Satisfaction in Your Life and Career. I can't wait to get you loving your life.